You probably don't know this, but the few, mom the few minutes right before I turn the camera on to talk to you, um, I panic because <laughs> I'm like, should I press the button? Should I do this now? What am I going to talk about? Uh, how am I going to organize this? Um, but hopefully it usually comes together um, in one cohesive mass by the time I'm done. Um, somebody once told me who saw me speak, they go, you're kind of like jazz. You're all over the place. But in the end, it all comes together. So welcome. Welcome for coming together with me today. Um, I think it's Friday and TGIF as far as I'm concerned. Um, we had a pretty interesting night here in my neighborhood. Um, there was a giant uh, block party that just erupted that was um, very boisterous and lively. Um, and those are the only adjectives I'm gonna use at the moment, but it was also quite loud. Um, and it went on very late into the night. And then this morning, um, some of us were uh, sleepless, <laughs> didn't get enough sleep. And there was a tiff between several neighbors that I was trying to referee and mediate a little bit, not very, uh, not very successfully, but we'll see what happens. Um, what happened in France was on, um, they announced that Monday, um, we're gonna be definitely be coming out of confinement. There'll still be restrictions. Restaurants won't be allowed to be open. Hello, Brad. <laughs> Restaurants won't allow to be open and certain other services. If you're planning a trip to Paris, hold off because nobody knows what's happening yet. Um, hotels are not open, so um, are police not stopping this? That was part of the activity last night, so um, I don't really want to get too into it because some of the parties might... Um, in this case, there are good people on both sides. I do know many of my neighbors, and it was unfortunate that people didn't come together on this. Anyway, um, I was watching on TV talking about, you know, the, um, the confination or confination being finished. And one guy said, good, because I'm tired of living in servitude. And I was thinking, this is not really servitude. Um, we're stuck inside, but, you know, most of us have it okay. We have, you know, I have electricity, I have you guys, I have my phone, I have internet, I have liquor. I can get food, so um, no block parties aren't allowed, Markella. So I, there's very little for me to complain about. Um, I do not like my internet access still, but that's something that, um, in that case, there's good people on only one side. That's me versus my internet company. <laughs> um, the good news is my tripod arrived, and you might have seen it on, I put it on Instagram. It's very, very rickety. Imagine if somebody unfolded a paper clip and balanced their phone on top. So it may fall down, um, I'm not sure, but I will be able to move it down when I start making today's drink. So I'm very happy to have that. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get the one with, I, didn't re I had no idea these were a thing, but um, there's a, there are some of these with a selfie light that makes you look really pretty. So. Hello, my sister. Um, so someday I'm gonna get one of those when everything's open. Um, and the last thing I guess I should mention is I, I posted on my blog today this cocktail, which is called the May Daisy. And I've been doing that. I wasn't planning on doing that when I started doing these Apero hours. And a lot of people were like, oh, what's the recipe? What's the recipe? And I was reading the recipe and telling people, um, but people would join in and they're like, what's the recipe and so forth. So I decided to start putting them on my blog, but I kind of had to do it every day. And it takes about two hours or so to put a blog post, I take a photo, make the drink and so forth. So I'm not sure how to proceed forward. I would love to keep doing these. Um, we are, you know, the whole idea was coming out of lockdown, you know, to be in lockdown, we're all in here together. And someone left, people left some really nice comments on my blog today about that when I questioned it. And I said something about, um, oh yes, I was, Maggie, I was at Balimalu, and that was a wonderful experience. I think I cried when I was speaking there because I was so emotional. Um, but I, I brought this up and people chimed in and I think it was good to do a subject, you know, definitely, you know, it was my book tour got canceled. I had a, you know, a book out and so forth and the book tour got canceled. I thought, well, this would be a great theme for a daily apparel hour. 
And some people are like, well, when are you gonna cook something? I'm like, well, it's apéro. The whole idea is not recipes, it's cocktail recipes. So um, there's lots of cocktail recipes, there's lots of food recipes in my blog, and I have nine books out, so there's, there's plenty of recipes. There's no shortage of recipes, recipes, recipes. So I'm not sure if I continue doing this, I might not do the re put the recipes on my blog just because that would be much easier for me. Um, and I would like to continue doing these, um, but I do, I do spend sort of half of my day putting that up. And I also think maybe people are getting bombarded with email. They don't, I don't want to bombard people with emails. A lot of people aren't interested in, some people aren't interested in cocktails. So I don't want to bombard people with emails and getting RSS feeds and updates on my, um, on my social media and an email, you know, email, so forth. So, oh, hello in Cincinnati. I love Cincinnati. Jap's Bar is wonderful. Had a great time there with the Savoir Magazine people. So that's that. Um, like I mentioned, I, uh, this is not a cooking uh, uh, video. It's about drinks because that's the theme of this. It's very, um, it's something very French. I had a really good interview with Christopher Kimball yesterday from Milk Street uh, for his podcast. And I won't really talk too much about it because I don't know how much I'm supposed to um, reveal. Um, yes, I can pin the recipe, but then I have to stop and do that. And I always feel like a dope a dope, because I can't talk to people while I'm doing it. And I always feel like I'm just leaving you hanging. So, and Midge Bear, yes, the recipes. I'm, I'm not doing recipes that are in the book most of the time. I'm trying to do new recipes, so. Um, that's that. So I was talking to Chris Kimball and we we're talking about what the aperitif means to the French, French people. And it's not just having a drink. It's a part of their life um, or our life, I should say. Um, it's like cafes. Cafes in Paris are sort of like the old US diners where people used to hang out. They used to go there every morning. They knew the waitresses and waiters. They knew the cooks and so forth. So um, the cafe was kind of like that. They're gathering places. And since we don't have them right now, and since you don't maybe have them either, I thought this was a good gathering place. And that's why I stuck with the theme apéro hour and decided not to do cooking and so forth. The other um, side of that, yes, Ivy's margaritas are awesome. It's my new house margarita. Um, <laughs> tape recipe on a piece of paper to cabinet behind you. Actually keep it in front of me, but everything's backwards. Um, yes, Mad King, I don't have to res respond to everybody's requests, but um, I'm very fortunate because most people, or I'd say 99.9% .9 of the people are just wonderful. So and I do get really lovely comments, which I'm very thankful for. So in spite of the fact that I only got three hours of sleep, I'm fine, really. Okay. <laughs> so I will continue Apero Hour for a bit. We'll see how it goes. Speaking of which, tomorrow I have a really great guest. Um, Frank Odu, and he has this beautiful gem of a cafe and we're gonna be shooting, he's gonna be there and I'm gonna be shooting there. You can print back recipe backwards. I can barely print one forwards, but um, that's an interesting idea. Frank is gonna be here doing a cocktail from his wonderful, wonderful, wonderful restaurant and bar called um, Cravant in Paris. It's C-R-A-V-A-N Paris. So he's, that's where he is um, at Cravon Paris. So he'll be here tomorrow night making a drink and I'm really excited because just to be honest with you, um, he's, he's kind of like this guy, he looks kind of gruff. He's like, oh, yeah. When he shakes a cocktail, he's like <laughs> And he's so nice. I was afraid to talk to him for like a couple of times, the first few times I went there and then I got to meet him and he was just really nice. <laughs> I was just, um, there's a great picture of him in this. He actually has, there's five pictures of him in the book. I don't know if I can find them easily. I don't want to make you stand there, but you'll see him tomorrow if you come back. So he'll be here tomorrow, Frank. And on Sunday, I won't be here, but I'll be with my friend Adam Roberts from Amateur Gourmet on his Instagram live. And I'll tell you more about that tomorrow, but he's at, at Amateur Gourmet and that's at 6 p.m. the same time. So you'll get to see me. And yes, Jennifer, I love that place too. I love Cravon. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, the place is designed by Hector Guimard, who designed the metro stations in Paris. Metro stations were designed that way, um, especially beautiful because when they opened the metro, people were afraid they didn't want to go underground. So the, the city had to make people want to go down underground. Almost all of the metro stations now are reproductions 
uh, during the war they sold them off or they sold they needed the metal and so forth um, so I think there's only two left that are actually this, still the original Paris metro stations and I believe there's one at a museum in Canada was there once anyway um, tonight today's cocktail oh today's cocktail is called the May Daisy and I was looking through Jim Meehan's book Jim, Jim Meehan's one of those um, very famous bartenders, a bar owner. And he's written a book called The Bartender's Manual that's outstanding. Um, and he used to run a bar, or maybe he was the owner, I'm not sure. Um, of, uh, it's called PDT, Please Don't Tell, one of the first speakeasies in New York City. Um, and he wrote a wonderful book about the PDT cocktail book. And I was looking through it and I found this recipe by a fellow named Phil Ward, who is a bartender in Brooklyn who was supposed to open a restaurant, a bar, right before the virus hit. And I believe it's in limbo with, along with a lot of other businesses. So this is from Phil Ward. It's, it's called a May Daisy. And I just so happens you, to use two French liqueurs, which is one of the themes of this after a hour. I always wanted people, somebody said a few moments ago, do a French martini, uh, espresso martini. And I actually have never had one. Um, and I was like, well, how can I tie that to France? Because I was like, well, the French love coffee, but I think those have vodka in them. I'll have to look at that, but I'm not sure. Hello in Half Moon Bay. I love Half Moon Bay. It's beautiful. Lots of fog though. And hello in Denver. So this drink is called the May Daisy. And, um, oh, Phil used to work at Long Island Bar. Yes. Um, Vittles Vom too is, is mentioning that. And Deb Perlman gave me a nice shout out on Smitten Kitchen today. I don't know if she's watching, but if she is, hello, Deb. Um, anyway, this cocktail is called the May Daisy and it uses chartreuse and cognac, uh, which are two liquors I've been using quite a bit because I like them. And that's the theme of this, um, this, I was gonna say, I was gonna say podcast, but it's not a podcast. Anyway. I am going to be able to move my camera down so I can, you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully, if it falls, you'll get a crotch shot or something worse. Oh, now I can't see you. Hello from sunny Oakland. Okay, well, I'm gonna... Chartreuse is expensive. Um, when Tim Masters was on, he, he's a brand ambassador for Chartreuse. Chartreuse. We talked about that. It was very interesting. Um, somebody wrote, to, left a comment to me. That she goes, I, I was making a, can you recommend a good cognac? Because I bought a bottle of basic Hennessy and it's not good. And somebody else responded, Maggie, who's been doing a lot of the recipes from my book. Hello, Maggie, if you're watching. <laughs> Um, she's just a regular person and she's doing all the recipes and I'm impressed with her Instagram stream, Maggie Beltram. Um, but she said, well, you should spend a little more and get better liquor. So everybody has a price point and a budget and I never want to tell people to buy something that's expensive that you can't afford, that you're not going to like. That's not my intention. And I know that everybody has a different price point, um, a budget. Um, you know, not everybody can wear Comme des Garçons or Chanel dresses. Some people shop at, you know, the thrift store. Some people go to Old Navy and it's all good. It's just um, with liquor, you sometimes get what you pay for, but you don't have to spend a lot to get decent quality and you don't have to have the very best. You know, you don't have to use a $300 bottle. You know, a bottle of Chartreuse in France costs, I think, 35 euros or in the US it's like 50 or 55 dollars you know it will last you a while and let's say you know if you go to a bar and you have two cocktails it's going to be 25 dollars um, so you can get a lot of cocktails out of a bottle um, I find it a good investment because I like it a lot it's one of the things that I don't mind spending a little more on um, you can also get it in half bottles um, and same with cognac um, I had uh, Alexander Gabriel on my show, um, the distiller of Pierre Ferrand Cognac and Plantation Rum and Citadel Gin. And he sent me this, which was very nice afterwards. So thank you, Alexander. And uh, Debbie, if she's watching, because I like his wife just as much as him, if not more. And she's learning how to be a, dis a master distiller. So that's what I'm going to say about liquors and this... Uh, this drink, the May Daisy, uses cognac and chartreuse. 
So I'm gonna start off with two ounces of cognac. I can, I didn't open this in advance, but I will. And I noticed that this cognac's a little higher proof than normal. Usually most alcohols are 40%, 40 proof, um, or 80 proof. Start again, start the whole thing again, sorry, no. <laughs> most alcohols are 80 proof, which is 40% alcohol. Uh, the higher the proof, the better it will taste in the drink, because you're gonna be diluting it with ice and lemon juice and a little sugar syrup, so. Um, chartreuse is 55% alcohol, which is why you usually end up using less, you don't put two ounces of it in a cocktail. Could you use Calvados? Yes. Where is Roman's recipe for carrot salad? I put that on my blog today too. It's been on the blog for, um, for since 2011 and I just updated it. I changed a few pictures and made it more readable because in the old days when before food blogs got super um, fancy. Um, it wasn't, the recipe was more written, you know, just spoken rather than explained. Uh, got a refund for airfare, donated half and spent the rest on liquor. <laughs> well, you're supporting, uh, both of these are actually, you know, I have no financial gain from this, but both of these are from, uh, they're independently owned businesses. They're not owned by big corporations. And chartreuse never can be because they'd have to give up the recipe and they're not, uh, they don't want to do that. So two ounces of cognac. This is so great. You can see what I'm doing. And I can sort of see what you're doing. Can you see my bald spot? Okay, no, sorry about that. Once again, uh, just a reminder, if you're on an iPhone, you can swipe down to minimize comments so you can see a little more. So there's two ounces of cognac in my shaker. And I'm going to add one ounce of lemon juice. It always feels funny to say freshly squeezed because I just assume that's what everybody uses. Um, right now, not everybody can get lemons. So uh, if you can't get fresh lemon juice, I urge you to try to find some fresh lemons. But if you can't and you have to use the bottled stuff, well, just don't put it online and get shamed about it. Just enjoy yourself. All right, I love these things. It's called a juice press. So I've got one ounce of lemon juice. There's two ounces of cognac in the shaker, one ounce of lemon juice, and then three quarters of an ounce of green chartreuse. I'm trying to read the comments and it's down. The other thing about buying good liquor is you enjoy it more. <laughs> I know that sounds funny, but I love having a little glass of chartreuse after dinner. Um, I don't do it very often, but it makes me happy. So I save money on other things like socks and underwear and you know, every, you know, you can't see there. I buy jeans at, you know, um, or I, bu I bought this at a thrift store. So <laughs> okay, never mind. we won't go there. So I just put three quarters of an ounce of chartreuse in the, the shaker. This is from JC Penny, actually. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I don't know why I'm bringing that up. And then uh, a half ounce of sugar syrup. The original recipe said three quarters of an ounce, but I um, actually found half an ounce was just fine. I know everybody always wants to use less sugar, even though in the grand scheme of things, um, a quarter ounce of sugar is not really a big deal. Sugar syrup. So I'm gonna move this back up. Is it chartreuse or chart chartreuse? It's chartreuse. Nice jigger. Yes, this is an OXO jigger. And um, I actually have the plastic ones, which I prefer, because you can see them easy, easier. But I was watching my friend Brad Parsons last night do, a, um, do an Instagram live, and he was using one of these. And I saw another uh, group of like cool bartenders, and they were all talking about these. So I thought I should use it today, but I actually do prefer the plastic one. This looks a little sharper, but da, da, da. So I measure, someone's asking me about measuring lemons. Um, I just measure it right into the shaker, uh, into the jigger rather. I mean, I don't usually call for like half a lemon because you don't know what that is. Every lemon's different. All right, ice. Am I doing okay on lack, lack of sleep? Yes, JCPenney, I know, right? <laughs> 
Oh, the plastic jigger is 27 on Amazon right now. Ay, ay, ay. Um, well, you know, OXO, I don't think, discounts their stuff. Um, so usually you can buy them anywhere and it's the same price. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it might be like Amazon or Sony where they don't discount. So you'd have to double check on that. But I know uh, most cookware stores carry them and Bed Bath & Beyond too. And I have a half, a fake half sister in San Francisco and she sends me those 20% Bed Bath & Beyond coupons for 20% off whenever I'm going back to America. So, okay. I'm going to shake. You want to shake to get it really cold. And generally the rule is you always shake drinks that have uh, citrus in them because you want to emulsify them. And you don't want to shake like this. I've seen some videos of people are like, shake. you really want to. Tomorrow when Frank is here, you'll see him shake and you'll never shake. He's like, Shh. so, all right. So I can't give up my little table. I can't quit you. Because it's just easier than moving the camera. So I have a chilled wine glass. I put it in the freezer for a little bit, for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And I'm gonna get some nice ice. Once again, my refrigerator makes these crescent-shaped ice cubes, which are okay. They just don't look that nice. Um, I think these look really, I like the way these look, these blocky ones, so. Um, I tried to get tweezers in the fancy bar store that sells them here in Paris. They're not fancy, but it was very complicated to get them. I said, can I you just like put it outside the door and I'll pay you. So, pour it over ice. That made a big drink. <laughs> and you could put a sprig of mint in it or you could put just a leaf. I'm actually gonna put a leaf in it. Um, when I was garnishing the, uh, the drink I made in the post, I put one leaf and since it's May, it seemed appropriate. Rather than having this big leafy bunch, one leaf seemed to mean um, rebirth to me like spring and uh, just call me crazy, but it seemed very appropriate just to have um, one leaf in there. So this is the drink, the May Daisy. Um, you could just serve it with a straw. Uh, maybe I'll get one of my little bamboo, I have one of these bamboo straws. Um, but it's very easy to sip. Mmm, mmm, mmm. <laughs> uh, it's really good. Um, it's better that I made one when I took the photo and this is even more delicious. I, I love this drink. It's got, there's chartreuse in it. You taste the cognac, the cognac sort of this regal, you know, this high class brandy. Um, then you have the chartreuse, which is high class too because of the price, but it's got that herbaceousness that's really um, earthy and warm and, it, al it feels alive when you drink it. And chartreuse is the only liquor that evolves in the bottle. So it does change and it does, the flavors evolve over time. Um, and the lemon juice, of course, gives it a really nice brightness. So, mm. Can you get chartreuse in the US? Mm. Yes. Um, I generally only use stuff that's available in the US because um, that's where a lot of you live. And I don't want to do too many things where you can't get uh, ingredients. I mean, actually, what's kind of interesting is you can get more things in the U.S. than you can in France, like half bottles of Jolan Vermouth or beer or other things. You can't buy those in France. You can only buy them in the U.S. Hello in Seattle, except Picon. Yes. We had a little discussion about that yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you had an off day yesterday in Virginia. Um, I think we've all had off days and that's okay because um, I was talking to someone recently about making mistakes. And I said, well, as a cook, that's all you do is you make mistakes. 
and then you feed it. When you're testing recipes, or as a cookbook author especially, uh, you only have yellow chartreuse. Um, yeah, you could use that. I would maybe cut out the sugar syrup if that's all you have. Um, oh yes, uh, Suze is great too. I'm glad you got that, uh, Pam, Pam O64. Um, um, bartenders, I, I have never stood around one that was standing there inventing drinks, but I have a feeling they make one, it doesn't work, and then they toss it or they give it away or whatever. Um, and then they try it again. So you sort of have to make mistakes to get to where you want to be. And I think we have to have those, those down days to appreciate the good days. Usually when I'm having a bad day, especially during the confinement, um, I, the next day is great. And the other day I felt really good and I sort of was happy. I was happy to be home. I was happy to be, um, I was watching Netflix. I was on the couch with the, you know, my pajamas on and it was two in the afternoon. I was like, this is great. Why are people, why does anybody want to go out? So, but I know that people do want to go out and I appreciate that people want to go to the parks and um, the gyms and get their hair done and their nails done and buy some new shirts because I think this is the last shirt that you haven't seen. Um, this might be my 40th show, so, <laughs> so maybe I need to mix it up with some sweaters or we can start like a GoFundMe to send me some shirts from, uh, from whatever stores are open these days. Nothing here is. Um, they, got, they even shut Amazon down here for a while, so I had to get this... I got mine from somebody on Amazon, but it got sent from China, I think, so. But it seems to be working well. Um, I'm just gonna say there's a couple of questions here. Help. Oh, any thoughts on Martel Cognac? Yes, I've had some very good Cognacs for them. Um, their Cognacs are quite good. There's a blue label one that's really nice. Once again, with Cognac, um, someone else is asking about VS or VSOP Cognac. Um, you know, the problem is, you know, you can use them for cocktails. If you're, you know, your only limitation is your budget. So you don't have to use a $100 bottle of cognac. You can use a $25 bottle of cognac. You can buy Spanish brandy. Spanish brandy is a good value and there's very good ones. It's not my expertise, but if you go into a good liquor store, um, I don't know, like in San Francisco, K&L, um, Astor in New York, uh, Slope Cellars in Brooklyn, they will tell you if they have, they'll show you what's good, that's Spanish, that might be a good um, substitute. Someone's asking what they can substitute for sugar syrup. Well, you could use some agave nectar. Um, I'm not sure because sugar syrup has a certain sugar level in it. So when a recipe calls for an ounce of it or a quarter ounce, the recipe is designed to have that sugar level. Okay, are all cocktail shakers the same size? No. Um, these are two vintage shakers I have, and you can see, it's a little hard to see, but you can see this one's a lot bigger and this one's smaller. Um, this is a baby one, which is actually, they're quite cute. Um, they're not great for, um, sh for, uh, you know, you can't put that much in, you can't get a really good shake. So a lot of professional bartenders, you'll see them using what's called a Boston shaker, which is two metal or metal and glass things. And they really agitate it and they really get that ice broken up and moving around. So those are quite good. Um, I find as a home person, I, I'm fine with a cobbler style shaker. It's just easier for me. And I'm not a, pro a professional bartender. If I was, I would definitely, um, Learn how to use one better. Mr. Rogers is back. I'm not sure what that means, but... Ah, what is the best cob in Paris to buy wine? That's a very difficult question because there's so many wine stores. Um, you know, in my neighborhood where I'm, you know, I'm standing, there's probably four or five wine stores. Depends if you like natural wines or whatever. Um, I love Cave de Belleville. The caves, the caves of Belleville. I think it's a great natural wine store, and the you know the wine's reasonable. But there's so many stores to buy wine at that I can't even begin to you know. There's everybody has wine. It's just everywhere. So, all right. Well, that's it for today. Um, agave doesn't dissolve as well. Yeah, it's not quite the same thing. Um, well, that's it for today. 
I hope you all get some sleep tonight, myself too, and I'll be better off on um, tomorrow. I'll be better tomorrow. <laughs> I won't be so punchy and weird. I'll try to find a new shirt to wear. <laughs> um, anyway, and I'll try to stop giggling. Um, I think when Margot was here from Combat, that's when I started laughing at things. And she always makes me smile now when I see her. So, um, so that's that. And I hope I smile when I see you too as well. I see your comments and I see you leaving posts on my blog, uh, comments on my blog, and everything's very nice. So that I read and it's very heartwarming. All right. I will see you tomorrow and I will be back at six o'clock with Frank Odu from Cravon in Paris. He's gonna be filming from his bar. Um, so that'll be really interesting. It's a beautiful bar. And then Sunday I'll be with Adam Roberts on his uh, Instagram live, not on mine, but on his. So I'll see you tomorrow. And my new tri thank you to my new tripod that didn't fall over. Um, several people are asking me which model it is and it's, it's like the only one in France that I could find that lets me hold the camera vertical. So that's that. Bring the cigarettes tomorrow. No cigarettes for me. <laughs> okay. Oh, hi, Maggie. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you bring me joy when I see your, your posts on Instagram uh, with my recipes and my book. I'm going to cry now. Okay. Got to go have my, my cry. <laughs> Okay, I'll see you soon uh, in 24 hours or 23 and a half hours. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day or good afternoon wherever you are. Bye-bye.